Welcome to this new tutorial for my Arch Shelter system, which is in use during most SPG operations. In this video, I will go through all the features, details and mechanics that you as a player should know about the Arch Shelter system. This video does not cover information for the missing creators. For that information, please refer to the written documentation, which I will link in the video description. First, I will go through the general principles of the Arch Shelter system as applied to all possible components. After that, I will explain in detail the specifics of each possible ammunition type that the system supports at the time of recording. Who can use the artillery system will be decided by the missing creator. That information should be available in the missing briefing along with what ammunition types are available. If the artillery system is enabled during a mission, you can see it in the Revelis artillery tab in your in-game map briefing screen. Here we have three pages. First, we have a link to the written documentation that will open up in your default web browser. In the available ordinance tab, you can see what ammunition types are available at mission start, and once you consume them, if they can be regenerated. In our current mission, we have 12 high explosive, 20 watt smoke and 20 illumination rounds available. And we can see that high explosive and white smoke rounds regenerate one round per 60 seconds. Notice that the values at mission start are also the maximum values, so you cannot regenerate your ammunition count, count over this maximum limit. Illumination rounds have no regeneration time listed. That means that we are unable to regenerate illumination rounds during this mission. You get 20, and once you have used them all, you will get no more. And the final page is a quick reference to the main UI, which I will go through in detail in a minute. If you have access to the artillery, you can activate the main interface by ACE self-interaction call-in artillery. Upon opening the main interface, first pay attention to the top right corner of the screen, where the hint box will display which ammunition types you have available and how many. Currently, since we have not consumed any artillery, we have the same ammunition amounts that we had at mission start. At the center of your screen, you have the main interface. The core parts are the seven fields displayed in the LCD display and some of the buttons found below. I will now go through each of these in detail. The first field is the Observer Position field. You can click on this field and you can write on it using your keyboard. Notice that you can use all normal text commands like Paint, Cut, Copy and Paste. In the Observer Position field, you are to input your position or where do you think you are on the map. Throughout this tutorial, I will refer to this as the indicated observer position. Notice that the indicated observer position can be inputted either in 6, 8 or 10 grid formats. The difference between these is accuracy. 6 grid format, given to you by the base game TPS, is 100 by 100 meter square. Should you use that as your indicated observer position, the artillery battery will assume you to be at the center of that square. If you in fact are at the corner of it, this can give you inaccuracy of over 50 meters. Using an 8 crit coordinate will transmit your position with accuracy of 10 by 10 meters, which is sufficient for most artillery barrages. For maximum accuracy, input indicated observer position in 10 crude format. This will transmit your position to the artillery battery with accuracy of 1 by 1 meters. This is the most accurate form of indicated observer position that you can use. The next field beneath the indicated observer position is the distance to target field. 
in this field, you will input in meters how far the target is from its indicated observer position. You can use laser range finders, map tools, or just your best guess. After that, you must input the target bearing. This is the compass bearing to your target from the indicated target positions. So target to your straight north will be at bearing 0. All targets to your east are bearing 90. And so forth and so forth. Beneath that is the designated target field. I will go through the design designated targets later in this tutorial. The range type field is something that you cannot write with your keyboard. To cycle through the ammunition that you have available, as shown in the top right corner of the screen with the hint window, can be done with the two arrow buttons at the bottom of the radio. After range type, you can input the range delay. This means in seconds how long a delay there will be between each round. So for example, if you want to have like a constant suppressing barras on a position, you can shoot let's say 10 rounds of high explosive with 10 seconds between each round. That means that it will take 100 seconds for the entire artillery barras to complete from the first round. And the final field is how many rounds do you want to shoot in this particular barras. The other controls available in the interface are the two buttons used to cycle through designated targets, which I will cover later in this tutorial. The clear button to exit the interface while saving your current inputs and the enter button to send a fire support request. To illustrate the functioning of the clear button or cancel message, say we have uh, inputted our position, the position observer field, we press clear or cancel message, and we reopen the interface, our previous inputs have been saved. An alternative method of closing the dialog is pressing the escape button. Please observe that when pre using escape to close the interface, whatever your current inputs are, they will not be saved. One final piece of information concerning the general principles of the artillery system is that you will be unable to call in any artillery bars over 1.5 kilometers away from your actual position. Your actual position is not the same as the indicated observer position, as you can misestimate your position and use, use that as the indicated observer position. The 1.5 kilometer maximum limit for all auxiliary barrages will be calculated from your actual position, no matter what you estimate yourself. This is to prevent abuse of the system, calling in artillery on enemy positions while you are back at base or waiting at respawn, etc, etc. Having gone through the main interface, we can now do our first barras using the high explosive ammunition. This is the most common type of ammunition available to you. It can be either 155mm howitzers or 82mm mortars, depending on what the mission maker decides to enable for the players. Now, we have reason to believe the enemy forces have occupied that church, which will be this marked area in the town of Kliniska. First, we need to figure out where we are. I happen to know that we have taken cover in this bus over here. which means that our indicated observer position will be using eight crit formats.
the following. I will save my current inputs using the clear or cancel message button. I will next establish my compass bearing to targets, which we will say is about 317. Once again, saving my inputs. And to estimate my distance to target, I will be using my map tools. Seven hundred meters to the back end of the chapel, so we're gonna call it like uh, our distance as six hundred and eighty meters. Our designated target will be none, as we'll be using the manual positioning inputs here. We are using high explosive rounds. We want simultaneous impacts of all our rounds, so we will set the delay to zero, and we will do four rounds of artillery. Now, please note that the higher round counts you call in, in the barras, it will increase the dispersion of the artillery. So every round of artillery, starting from one, will increase the dispersion of the barras by 10 meters. So in this case, a barras of four rounds means that all four cells will land in a circle that has a radius of 40 meters from our indicated target position. Our indicated target position is formed from our own observer position combined with our distance to target and our bearing targets. So in our case, from our indicated observer position combined with the range and angle to the chapel. Now let us call in our rounds and spot them using the confirm message. Прошу срочно огневую поддержку по указанным координатам. Прием. Квадрат 0565094.5. Курс 315. 700 метров. Огонь! 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 Координаты цели получены. Начинаем обстрел. Конец связи. Залп дан. Конец связи. Okay, it seems that we were a bit off target. Our rounds landed the right side of the church. So we are going to correct our next set of next set of rounds. Also, we may have been a bit short. So perhaps the original 700 meter estimate would have been better. These inaccuracies are most likely as the result of me not being entirely correct with our indicated observer position. So to correct this barrage to hopefully hit the church, is that we want our rounds to go a bit more left, so we're going to decrease our target bearing, let's say by 3 degrees, to give us a bearing of 314, and we're going to increase our distance to target by 20 meters to 700 meters, and call in another 4 rounds. As you can see, we have consumed some of our ammunition, so we are now down to 8 high explosive. Прошу срочно огневую поддержку по указанным координатам. Прием. Квадрат 0565094.5. Курс 315. 700 метров. Огонь! 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 Координаты цели получены. Начинаем обстрел. Конец связи. Залп дан. Конец связи. And there we go. Rounds are impacting on targets. The smoke rounds are called in exactly the same way as high explosive. The one difference between smoke artillery and high explosive is that the radius for the accuracy or inaccuracy of smoke rounds 
is half of the high explosive. So each round of white smoke will increase the dispersion radius by 5 meters instead of, instead of 10. So a barrage of 4 white smoke will land in a circle that has a radius of 20 meters instead of 40, as it would have been for high explosive. Now, since the white smoke works the same way as the high explosive, I'm going to take this opportunity to demonstrate how the designated targets work. Designated targets are a game mechanic that can be added by the missing creator. You cannot, they cannot be added while the mission is already ongoing. The designated targets represent the artillery battery having time to pre-plan and prepare for planned fire missions. In our case, we have two designated targets ready for, for immediate fire missions. We have GRP-1, which is the uh, bunker in the middle of the field to our northeast, as seen there. And TRP-2, which is the entrance to farm complex, right about there. The advantage of designated targets is that they are faster to call in. If you select a designated target using the buttons, the designated target will override all positional data. So indicated observer position, target distance and target bearing will be igno ignored. So in our case, we are going to call in smoke, smoke bars at TRP1. Having TRP1 selected, everything else here will be completely ignored. Why this makes designated targets faster to use is that for, we would not have to estimate our own position. We don't have to estimate our ranked targets or our bearing. The artillery battery knows where this target is and they have already prepared their calculations for it. Прошу срочную огневую поддержку по указанным координатам. Прием. Обнаружил цель. Огонь. Координаты цели получены. Начинаем обстрел. Конец связи. Залп дан. Конец связи. There we go. Smoke is being deployed to the targets. Designated targets will be available for all, for all artillery types. Illumination rounds works exactly the same way as the smoke rounds. Each round of illumination will increase the dispersion by 5 meters. The lifespan of an illumination round is somewhere between 50 and 60 seconds. So, to illuminate the targets, in this case we are going to use the same shovel as we did before. We are going to first, we do not want to use any different targets, cycle down back to none. Ordinance, we're going to select illumination rounds and we're going to put in a delay of 50 seconds between each round. So, four rounds with 50 second delay will give us about four minutes of constant illumination above the target. Прошу срочную огневую поддержку по указанным координатам. Прием. Квадрат 0, 5, 6, 5, 0, 9, 4, 5, курс 3, 1, 5. 700 метров. Сигнальные ракеты. Координаты цели получены. Начинаем обстрел. Конец связи. And there we go. We get the initial flare in the air. And due to how far we are, we are unable to observe it. But and there we go. As the previous round went away, the next one. Is already in the air. Now I have also buffed the flare 
il luminosity or luminosity in the auxiliary system, as I think the vanilla flares in the base game were pretty underwhelming. These ones are a bit more useful, as in they light lighten up a larger area of the battlefield. Calling in a missile strike starts the same way as calling in an artillery barrage. So first we must estimate our indicated observer position. In this exercise, we'll be making use of the ace mitra dagger to give us an accurate 10 grid coordinate of our position. Next, we'll make use of our laser designator to get our range and bearing targets. However, if we try to call in a missile strike, we will get an error saying that there is no target designated with a laser. Check your coordinates. All missile launches are initially homed in on an active laser, so there must be an active laser source within 100 meters of your designated target position. So in this case, we will activate our laser designator, have our laser beam within 100 meters of the coordinates that we have inputted, and then we will send message. If your coordinates are accurate and there is an active laser found, the missile strike banner interface will open. At the center of the map you will see your indicated target position marked with the red cross. The red circle around it represents the 100 meter radius around the indicated target position from which the laser beam is being searched. There must be an active laser beam in this red circle when you finally call in the missile. If there are multiple active lasers in the search area, the missile will randomly choose one of them and home in on that laser. So if you have multiple players with laser designators, it is good practice to make sure that you are the only one currently lasing a target when calling in a missile strike. On the left, we can see all available missile types. Which missile types are available in the mission will be determined by the mission creator. Our final control is our flying altitude slider. From using this slider we can set for the flight altitude of the missile. For our first missile we will stick to the roughly 500 meter mark. And finally we must select for which direction will the missile come in from. Looking at our target we can see that there is a mountain ridge to its south. This won't be a problem using the uh, our current altitude, but with lower altitudes there is a small possibility that if there are like tall buildings or very tall trees or some, some other terrain form that the navigational computer of the missile does not recognize that it may actually hit the terrain and explode prematurely. So especially for a low, low level approach for our current target, I would recommend either northwest, north or northeast, as that area of is open plan. Remember that at the final phase of the missile's flight path, it will go into terminal mode and homing directly towards the, towards its target, ignoring any terrains. I will demonstrate and explain this mechanic in detail in a moment. But for our first missile, we will uh, have standard 500 meters and calling the missile directly from our north. Select the missile approach direction outside the red circle, which represents the minimal range. Once you are done, calling the missile strike. 请求立即向指定坐标提供活力支援。请回复各坐标1037610710。轴承坐标210，一公里，导弹。Pay attention to the flight tracker on the top right corner of the screen. That will display the crucial information about the current missile status. Uh, 
Don't try to destroy it. In this next demonstration, we will be shooting at a moving target. We have an enemy APC coming up along the road. So first, we will input our indicated observer position using the micro dagger. Using 8 crit formats. Since the target is moving, we will lead our indicated target position to just a little bit. However, we won't be using our own handheld laser designator for this. Instead, we have a drone in the air that we will take control over. And have him lay the target for us. We will call the missile from north to the east. Please send the target to the target. Please send the target to the target. Please send the target to the target. Please send the target Notice that the laser doesn't have to be from your person. In this case, we are using an external drone to laser the targets, but it also could be from another player or you could be using a vehicle. As I said, after the missile has been launched, the missile will homing on an active laser. The active laser can be moved and target destroyed. As normal, the initial launch position of the missile. Has to be within 100 meters of the indicated target position. However, as we just saw, after the missile has been launched, the missile will follow the laser wherever it will, it will go, even if the target moves further than 100 meters from the initial indicated target position. In this next demonstration, I will illustrate what will happen if the active laser guidance is lost during the missile's flight path. As normal, you must call in the initial missile strike within 100 meters of an active laser. Now, once the missile is in flight, the missile will home in on the laser. In this case, let's say that our target has moved to the hillside. I will now turn my laser off. And we can see the missile guidance has switched to inertial. The missile will home in on the last known position of the laser. Like so. Observe this missile as it flies through the terrain at an altitude of 500 meters. This is the missile's behavior while in tranced mode. When the missile closes in on its final destination, it will switch to terminal mode. In terminal mode, the missile will, will fly straight towards its target, ignoring any terrain. When terminal mode is activated, depends upon the missile's flight altitude. In this case, our missile has flight altitude of 500 meters. So, when the missile is 500 meters away from the target, as measured on a two-dimensional plane, it will switch to terminal mode. If our missile had a flight altitude of 100 meters, then it will switch to terminal mode when it's 100 meters away from the target. Finally, I would like to note that designated targets work for missile strikes as well. In this case, we have a designated target, Target Sierra, marked as the Tanoa Sugar Company. 
same as normal auxiliary barrages if you are using a designated target all positional data will be ignored however all missiles will require an active laser near the indicated target position in this case a designated target so to call in the missile on sugar company we will activate our laser and try again notice that when using a designated target there will be no separate target marker the target marker will be our designated target marker itself Calling in air support happens the same way as calling in a normal artillery barrage. So first, we must estimate our indicated observer position. Our target, seen there behind the trees, is the village of Ket Thak. You can also see the statue of the Buddha to our northeast, which would be over here. As such, uh, we are somewhere in these rocks over here. With the distance target, just over one kilometer. So let's get our bearing first. And call in air support. The airstrike planner resembles the missile strike planner. On the left side, you can select from the list available aircraft. Which aircraft are available will be determined by the mission creator. Once you have selected your aircraft, you will have a list of the loadouts, loadout options for that plane. These loadouts are taken directly from game configs. In this case, we can go for a rocket cast. You can also select at what altitude the plane will start flying in. You can change this while you are in, in flight. You can go with 500 meters. Next, you must choose where the plane will be coming from. This is important as finding your target will be up to you as you will be piloting the plane. I think that we will be coming in straight west. This will give us fairly each time indexing not target. Once you are ready, you can call in air support. Requesting close air support at the designated location. Over. Grid zero six seven one six two bearing zero four five. One click. Roger. Coordinates received. Cass is inbound. Out. There we go. Now we are on the plane. Also popped in purple smoke scene over there, and that must be our chart. Notice the remaining time indicator on the top right corner. This is in seconds how long do you have to pilot the plane. The length of this time will be determined by the missing creator. If you are still piloting the plane when the time runs out, you will automatically be disconnected from the plane and the plane will return home on its own. Should you wish to end the air support earlier than the maximum time, you can use the release or disconnect from UAV option found in your action menu. Since the F4 Phantom is a two-seater plane, you are able to take control of the co-pilot as well. If you do that, the AI will loiter around the area and you are able to use whatever turret weapons you have available. CAS mission complete. RTB out.
Finally, should the aircraft be lost to enemy action or pilot error, there will be a penalty. Observe as I crash this aircraft purposefully to the ground. Be advised, we've lost contact with the aircraft. Out. The length of the time penalty added for a lost plane will be determined by the mission maker. In this case, 300 seconds or, or 5 minutes will be added to the regeneration time until you can get your next close air support available. If the mission has no option for regenerating close air support strikes, then obviously this strike was lost and will not be regained. Calling in a resupply drop follows the same principles as calling an artillery or airstrike. At this point you should be familiar with how to estimate your indicated observer position. Unlike during the previous demonstrations, we will be calling the supply drop directly on our own position atop this hill. You can call it somewhere else should you choose to do so. After inputting your support request, a new interface will open up. In this window, you can select which items to put into the container that will be delivered to your location. Which items are available will be determined by the music creator. Notice the bar on the bottom right corner. This indicates how much space you are using of the available container. So you are unable to have infinite amount of items. The interface resembles how arsenals work, and you can always refer to the tooltips to see which categories are which. Once you are ready with your uh, supply order, press OK, and it will be put into the map screen, which is similar to the air support one. The center, we can see our indicated target position marked with the supply drop. On the left, we can see which aircraft will be delivering our supply. This will be determined by the mission creator. From the list below it, we can select which item or attachment put into the box. Smoke grenades, IR grenades and chem lines are available. The purpose of these is to make it easier for you to see where the supplies will be dropped. In this case, we'll be selecting purple smoke. Finally, you can select the flight altitude that the aircraft, in this case, uh, helicopter will be flying in and dropping the supplies from. Supplies dropped from higher up will be easier to see from the ground. However, there will be, or the supply crate will be affected by the wind. So you have been warned. We're going to leave this at the default 300 meters for demonstration. And we will order the delivering aircraft to approach from southeast. درخواست بسته کمکی از هوا در موقعیت فرستاده شده تمام موقعیت یک سه سف سف هشت چار راست به سمت شما یک صد متر تایید می کنم مهمات در راه تمام As we can see from the ACE weather indicator, the wind speed is picking up, that this will affect where the crate will eventually land. There is our delivering helicopter. محموله پرتاب شد تمام ما 
Well, that was a fairly easy drop for us. Yeah. We didn't affect the trade too much. As I said, in this case we picked purple smoke to make it easier for us to find the trade in the train. However, just as you can see them, so can the enemy. So, upon arriving on the crate, you will have an option of A's and tracks on the box to remove attachments. This will immediately delete whatever attachments you have, preventing the smoke cloud from attracting any more attention than you want. And then it's just a matter of opening the inventory and picking up whichever items you, you choose. Gunship support works almost identically to air support. In this case, we already have a designated target, target Lima 1, marked as ready on the far side of this valley. Selecting our designated targets and cycling to our gunship support. We are, we are ready to call in the airplane. Notice that since we are using a designated target, we can ignore all positional data. In the Gunship Operation Planner interface, first you will see our target. In this case, since we are using designated target, will be target Lima. On the left, we can see which Gunship we will be using. This will be determined by the missing creator. We can manually select the loiter radius, which will be indicated by the red circle on the map. I think we will be going for like one kilometer. We can also select our loitering altitude. I think we'll go for 800 meters. The final slider view distance is necessary. If you have a really large loiter radius and loiter range, you will need to increase your view distance before you are put into the gunship to be able to actually see anything. In this case, the default 5000 5, given to us will be more than sufficient. Once you exit the gunship, your view distance will be reset to whatever your settings were before you started the um, gunship operations. Finally, we will select our approach direction. Same as with air support, depending, you can use your approach direction to help you index and finding your target. However, we will not be flying this aircraft ourselves. We will be on the gunner's mission. Requesting close air support at the designated location. Over. Eyes on target. Roger. Coordinates received. CAS is inbound. Out. There we go. We are now inside the aircraft. AF pilots will do their best to hold the launch of the wing and the wings and help to do this as by us. Mission complete. RTB out. You can end your gun support, gun support all the same ways as you can end your air support by manually disconnecting, as I did right now. Alternatively, once the gun ship runs out of time, you will be disconnected automatically and the gun ship will fly home. Or if the gun ship is killed, you will be automatically disconnected. There is no penalty at the moment for losing a gun ship to enemy action. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. My name is Reveli, and I will see you on the next one.